in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together today. Lord, it is so wonderful to have children gathered together in your name to learn your word, Lord Jesus. Especially being on a weekend, there are so many other things that they could have been drawn to. Lord, we thank you that you have brought all of us here to listen to what you're going to speak through Alliston. Lord, open our hearts, our minds to receive your word so that it may bring out, bring forth harvest in multifold and may, may it manifest in our lives the way you want us want it to be in our lives, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, Alliston. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So, we are actually continuing on this uh, series which we were having on the past few days. Praise God. Uh, about uh, our faith in response to His grace, the grace faith exchange. Hallelujah. Alliston, yeah. your, uh, your voice is not clear. Like yesterday. Is it clear now? Yeah, little better. Okay, now? Yes. Okay, praise God. It's uh, like yesterday. Uh, now is it clear, Master? Yeah, it's it clear, Alistair, but it, it seems a bit distant. Okay, okay, just give me a second then. Let, uh, let me see. Just give me a second. Praise God, now is it clear? Yes, good. Yes, okay, yeah. thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise okay, the praise Lord. God. So, yesterday and uh, the day before, so we were seeing about this uh, grace, uh, faith, exchange, where God's grace has made available to us and we are responding to that grace by our faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. So does anyone remember what uh, we were seeing yesterday? Which scriptures did we, were we see? We were seeing about Jairus, the about? woman of the issue of blood. Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood, yes. Correct. About grace. About grace. We saw something else also. God understands uh, the language of faith and we also need to uh, believe in him yes. through our faith. Yes. Through God the only speaks faith. faith. Yeah. But it, God know, only speaks faith. Yeah, God only speaks faith. Correct. Okay, let's go back to Mark chapter 5. Verse number 27. Okay, we'll read from 26. I see that. And had suffered, okay, 25. And a certain man, a certain woman, sorry, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all, not some, but all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus. Now the Bible says, if you see that verse in the Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The first hearing 
is the hearing through our physical ears. The second hearing is the inner hearing where we are meditating on it, thinking on it, pondering on it. And that's why you see this logos and rhema. The logos is what? The logos is the written word of God, the word of God that is written, which is the first hearing. But rhema is the word of God, the spoken word of God, where that word begins to speak back to you, not audibly, but that word speaks to you from the spirit. These are the two types of hearings. And you see, he's saying, means she had heard. Means she heard of Jesus. That power in the word, when someone came to her and said, you know what, Jesus is in town. You know what, Jesus has come. Though that power which was in that word was able for her to receive her healing. Praise God. <clears throat> okay. Can you put that scripture once again, Enoch? Enoch, are you there? Can you put the scripture? Okay. For she, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his gown. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now the Bible says, this woman had suffered for how many weeks? 12 weeks. No? Yes, 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. About, 12 weeks. Years. About 10 weeks. About? About 12 weeks. 12 weeks or 12 years? 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. It was not 12 days, not 12 weeks. Now imagine a person suffering for 12 months, one year. What will happen to that person? They'll be, they'll be very, very exhausted. Yeah, they'll be bedridden. Bedridden, two years, bedridden. Then imagine this woman who was suffering for how many years? 12. 12 years. What should be her condition? Weak. Very bedridden. Sick. Now, this crowd, the Bible says in verse number 24, it wronged Jesus. I, I, was, I was explaining that yesterday and I was giving you the example of dominoes, right? Yeah. The game called Bad dominoes. Yeah, like that. This people, if A falls on B, then B will fall on C, then C will fall on D, then D will fall on E, E will fall on F, and they will all fall on Jesus. Okay, and everyone is falling on each other. Why? Because they all want to push in the crowd, shove with themselves in the crowd, and reach to Jesus. Now, this woman who has suffered for 12 years. Is there any way she can go through this crowd and come to Jesus? Everyone is pushing. What will happen to this woman? She'll fall. She'll trip and fall, fall and everyone will stamp her. Stamp her and walk. She'll be the last. Now, 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 now you see this woman, she went through the crowd, she touched the hem of his garments. How was that possible? Through faith. Through faith? You know how? Because her, the Holy Spirit confirmed the word that she was speaking to herself. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Those words which she was speaking over and over again, the Holy Spirit confirmed it and he made the way for her. And that's why she was able to go through the crowd and touch the hem of the garments. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And immediately Jesus, knowing in himself that the virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press. In the press means there is so many people that everyone is pressing on him, pushing him. 
he turned about in the press in the crowd and said who touched my clothes and the disciples are very smart they're using their logic and they're saying thou sees the multitude thronging thee and thou says and says thou who touched me isn't that a very good statement if this crowd is so big everyone is falling on you that means everyone is touching your clothes and then you're asking who touched me this god now he's, he, the, 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 this word says and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing now the bible says jesus even knew that it was a her not a him he knew exactly he knew that this power was working and he's looking around to see who had done this thing and the but the woman fearing and trembling you know this woman was so much fearful of jesus okay knowing the punishment that jesus would give her came and fell down before him and told them all the truth is anyone with me is anyone paying attention can you repeat or is everyone sleeping see that but the woman fearing and trembling knowing that jesus will punish her came and fell no, down knowing no, what was no, done no. in her knowing what was done in her so this fear is fear oh what if god punish me or oh, what if jesus punish me or is this fear the fear of the lord knowing the testimony of what happened to her and coming and testifying in front of this crowd in front of so many people about what jesus has done and she is admitting this in front of whom jairus Jesus. people jesus jairus now jairus being a ruler of the synagogue if jairus hears this this woman is in a very big risk why cuz you see the uh, the people who are the issue blood they were not allowed out of the house and jairus was a ruler of the synagogue so if she is going to come out of the house you know what will happen if they come out of the house they are going to be stoned to death so this woman was in a very big uh, you know situation where if she comes out she there is a 90% 99.9% of being stoned to death but did she have held herself back saying no i'll not do it or did she come touch the hem of the garment believing thy faith what did jesus say and he said unto her daughter thy faith she came out believing no matter what the sin was saying the sin conscious but she was righteousness conscious she came out and she touched the hem of this garment and that is the testimony she sharing in front of the people in front of jairus the ruler of the synagogue and in front of jesus and he said unto her daughter thy faith has made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague while he yet spoke there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said thy daughter is dead why troublest thou the master any further so what is what what is what is this people coming there is another voice now all this time jairus was responding to the voice of grace but now came the voice of work works okay why trouble you thou the master any further your daughter is dead just leave him as soon as jesus heard means in other words immediately no minute wasted as soon as jesus heard the word that was spoken he said unto the ruler of the synagogue okay i'll not come to your house you can go back home no did jesus say that no what did jesus no. say do not be afraid believe only i would say i i always like to see this way i i i would think jesus when 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 the jairus is hearing the jesus pulls him back and says do not be in fear but only but only but only believe 
What's the meaning of the word only? Nothing else. Correct? Nothing else, only believe. Nothing else. Okay, nothing else. Okay, that's right. Nothing else. I'll take that. It means no other way. Nothing else. No other way. Now, when he's saying only believe, what he's saying, don't doubt. There is nothing else that can help you. No other way. Just believe. Only believe. Now, see what Jesus is doing. And he suffered no man to follow him. Now, there was this big crowd. What does Jesus do to this big crowd? Tell him to stay there. Tell them to stay there. Leaves them in the middle of the, when they are walking, he just abandons them. And what does he do? He takes Peter, Peter and James, James and John and the go. brother of James. Yes, correct. Now, why is it Peter, James and John only? Why can't it be uh, so someone else like Thomas and Bartholomew? Or why can't it be someone else? Why is it only Peter, James and John? Even when, Jesus, when, uh, James, uh, when Peter and John were going to the temple, why was it only Peter and John that helped this lay, lay man to be sick? Why was it only Peter, James and John that saw the transfiguration? Because they were the closest disciples. Yeah, they were the closest disciples having the closest relationship with Jesus. They did not follow Jesus because the crowd followed. Or they did not follow Jesus because Jesus told them to follow when he met them at the first time fishing. But they followed because they were having a close relationship. Okay, and now Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and he comes to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and sees the tumult, the commotion, in other words, means all people are crying, all are wept, and them that wept and wailed greatly. Come on, if you're in a place and suddenly someone is dead, what will be the first thing? Crying, weeping, crying. wailing. Falling. Right? Weeping. Also falling on the body. But then, falling on the body or the box. Yeah, yeah, being all sad, crying, crying, right? Most important thing is crying. But what did Jesus do when he came? He saw all this, wept, wailing. That's what we will also do, right? Yes. And that's yes. what they, 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 Jesus saw these people are doing. And when he came in, come in, he said unto them, why you make you this ado uh, means tumult means commotion the sound and weep the damsel is not dead but sleeps see if there is a person lying dead still eyes closed no breath in him no breathing nothing just lying down there oh, extremely dear. still and someone comes and says you know what uh, he's dead and then and then someone comes and says no he's not dead he's sleeping what will be your condition can I, can I ask you, Surprise. what will be your condition? Pardon? Nice? Surprise. Surprise. Okay, surprised. What about others? Astonished. What about you, Sister Devi? Astonished. What about you, Sister Devi? How will you feel? Confused. <coughs> Confused. Okay, what else? Can you speak to me? Any other answers? How will you feel? I you think won't believe the other person. Yeah, we won't believe. Yeah, because we yeah, see this that. guy. Because this, everybody this, else this, is telling she's dead for a long time. Yeah, this 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 person has gone mental, psycho. This person has oh. gone crazy, right? Yeah. Yes. And that's what, that's what these people also thought. They laughed him to scorn. They were laughing at him. They, they did not respond to the voice of grace. They responded to the voice of fear. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, so wonderful, right? What does that mean today? If there is someone in the house, you have to put them out of the house, tell them not to live in the house, no. to go search somewhere else. No, not if they're not according to the word, tell them to get out of the house. No, 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 no. So, what no. they have to do? So, what is that representing? Ignore them, ignore them, ignoring them. Okay. Holy Spirit will help us understand. Many people think overcoming tribulation means ignoring tribulation. Let me tell you, if you're going to ignore the tribulation, that is not according to the word of God. Because if anyone 
is ignoring is uh, ignoring the tribulation or ignoring the child you know what they're doing they are suppressing the facts suppressing the thoughts see many a times we are suppressing the thoughts by uh, many people when they get a bad thought they go shopping to divert their mind or they go um they 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 they, they go watch a movie or they go hear some music or they go sleep you know what is that they suppressing the facts trying to ignore, trying to trying to just how do i say ignore it they trying to ignore it they trying to make that as if it's not a, it's not there but god's word never ever tells us not to treat something like it's not there the word of god tells us to treat something as if it is there if there is a sickness the bible doesn't say treat that sickness as if there was no sickness but the bible says treat that healing as if it is there did i confuse you all you get that a little bit okay how else do i say it holy spirit you help us understand i'll repeat that once again okay a little slowly okay see the bible doesn't tell us not uh, let me say it like this thank you holy spirit the bible tells us not about what we shouldn't focus on but the bible tells us what we should focus on have you noticed that the bible says resist the devil then submit to god and then the devil will flee from you right yes yes no submit oh, no, 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 no. to and then resist the submit to god and then this is the devil so the bible never tells you to do the, see i say it in a even, even in a easier way the bible doesn't tell you what not to do but the bible tells you what to do the bible doesn't tell you in the bible there is a scripture saying walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh galatians 5:16 many people take it like this you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh then you walk in the spirit when i stop alcohol then i can walk in the spirit when i stop playing games then i can walk in the spirit i remember on that first day when sister josephine came when sister josephine asked how many of you are playing games every hand was raised every hand was raised every single hand was raised but the same people after a week or so when sister josephine asked she never said to anyone stop playing games stop watching this stop watching that she never said it she asked you a week later how many of you are playing the games not even a single hand was raised because you in that week we understood what to do not what no she 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 when she says also knows explaining she never went and said and said you should not do this you should not watch cartoons you should not play games i i don't i don't remember there is any teaching that sister dosna said that but what did she say she taught you the truth and when she was teaching you the truth that she was teaching you what to do now when that word was teaching to you what to do the suddenly what not to do went away it 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 went away and that has happened to me that's why i would always say this one word i did not leave cartoons i'm telling you the truth i did not leave cartoons many people are thinking that means you still watch cartoons no i did not leave cartoons cartoons left me i did not leave games games left me i did not leave alcohol alcohol left me that should be the sentence games left me because you are not trying to do what you are you are not trying to remove what you are not supposed to do but we are supposed to do what he has told us to do we are not supposed to be a uh, try to not be focused on what he has not uh, told us not to be focused on but we have to be focused on what he has told us to be focused on so now did you get it yes this woman this woman who came to jesus she was not focused on what she shouldn't do not coming out she should not come out of the house she was not sin 
conscious but she was righteousness conscious on what she had to do and what she had to do was come and touch the hem of this garment and believe that she was healed and it manifested so now did you understand thank you holy spirit now did you understand yes 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 Yes, I still remember that first day. There was not even after a week or so. There was yeah, not yeah. even one single hand that was raised saying, "I still play games." On the first day, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty children were there. I remember every one of them had raised hand. I think there was only one or two that is Nishan Auntie and Nisha Auntie who had said they don't play games. Otherwise, everyone else was there. But today. The, uh, a week later from that day the same 60 children did not when 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 sister jocelyn asked again how many of you play games not even a single hand was raised zero hands were raised why you did not leave games and cartoons cartoons and games left you you don't you you are not supposed to leave that addiction that addiction should leave you that's why when i came to christ in the beginning you know what i used to do i used to study the word play the games study the word play the games both at once but when i started to study that word no i did not try to leave cartoons or get out by my will power from today onwards i'm not going to play it. from today onwards i'm not going to play it. the more you're going to say that the more you're going to find you're going to play it. but instead i was focused on what i have to do that is study the word then everything else left the cartoons left praise god okay now can you put the scripture once again Now, sit clear. Raise your hands if you understood that, because first I remember most of you were confused. Okay. 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 Good. Hallelujah. That's how many people now? Only five. So others do not understand. Okay, five, six, seven. Out of fifteen, eight, eight of them, or should I say? six of them did not understand hallelujah okay i guess so they understood they just did not raise the hand okay so see that and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her talai te kum kumai which is being interpreted damsel i say unto you arise and straight away the damsel arose and walked for she was at the age of 12 years and they were astonished with a great astonishment and he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat okay let's 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 see another scripture another verse on this Okay, grace and faith. Let's see some examples in the Bible. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter two. We'll see some examples. This is the first one. I think uh, we will see three or four of them. Praise God. Okay, Mark chapter two, verse number one. See this. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. and it was noised means it was heard some translation says heard you know can you just give me nkjv new king james version and again he entered capernaum after some days and it was heard that he was in the house immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them not even near the door and he preached the word to them then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men and when they could not come near him because of the crowd they uncovered the roof where he was so when they had broken through they left down the bed on which the paralytic was lying now 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 
we don't have a lot of backstory on this paralytic man. But this is how I like to see it and this is how I understand it. Now, these people, this man, when he is having, like, you know, he's treating these other four men like servants. Go bring me this, go bring me that. When, when, when first few days, the person is kind. The one who is telling others to do this, this, this is kind. But then what happens? Then the thinking comes. Then, uh, the, 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 then the people who are doing it, they start getting uh, start saying this man is doing it on purpose now right doesn't that happen if they're too settled in their uh, sickness and things like that they are relying completely on others and it's like this where uh this paralytic is saying to his foreman oh i just noticed you were in the kitchen could you just bring me some food i were well, i'm hungry i'm paralyzed so i would get it but i'm paralyzed so i can't do anything about it so can you get it and things like that, right? Doesn't that happen? Correct. People get too, we get too, um, how to say, wrapped up in the situation. Okay. And, and that's what, that that's how I like to see it. And now the, the, they're doing everything for him and everything for him and everything out of guilt and doing it for him. And now they come to know that Jesus is in town. And they all gather in another room. I, 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 there is no scripture for this, but this is how I like to see it. They gather in another room and they say, I don't know, but I'm tired of this. I'm no longer on bath, bath duty anymore. I am no longer on feeding him anymore. I'm no longer on mass, massaging his back anymore. And uh, are you tired of this? And they all start talking and say, if Jesus is really who they say he is, then we'll go. And they take this paralytic man and they go to Jesus. And the paralytic man is saying, oh, where we are going, where we are going, where we are going. And the four of them say, shut up, we're going to see Jesus. And off they go to Jesus. And what happens? Big commotion is there. People are there. No even place at the door. Now what the paralytic will say, oh, Jesus is not there. Now what should we do? Maybe next time. Now let's go back home. Right? And no. the four men are saying, no, we are not going back home. You are going on your feet back home. Okay. And now they are all talking and they're saying, how should we get in? And they say, two of them say, do you think what I'm thinking? And two of them leave the par paralytic and run up the stairs, run up to the ceiling. And two of them are hauling this paralytic uh, man and they lay him down. That's how I like to see it. Okay. That's, uh, that's not written in the Bible. You can't quote me from the Bible. But uh, I, I like to see it that way. And the Bible says it, they lowered him. Okay, they, 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 they uncovered and they let down. They lowered. Some translations say lowers. I think in the Greek, the word lowered means dropped. But I'm not that sure. Dropped, but I'm not that sure. Okay. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I'll have to do some more studying on that. Now, 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 this happens, right? People get too comfy in their sickness and they're completely dependent on others. And then others are thinking, come on, this person is taking us as advantages. And now they say, let's take this man to Jesus. And they go to Jesus. And Jesus heals him. This paralytic man, can you come back to KJV, no? please? Are you trying to search for the, uh, the scripture that's saying a lower? Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay then. We'll see it and compare. I'll show them. Uh, just support and compare photos. They let down, let down. They let down, let down, okay. They let down, let down. The lowered, ERV says lowered, ERV, do you see that? But they could not get the man inside to Jesus because the house was so full of people. So they went to the roof above Jesus and made a hole in it. Then they lowered the mat with the pa paralyzed man on it. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Now, you see this, okay, this... Jairus, where did Jairus find himself? 
at the feet of Jesus. Where did the woman find herself? At the feet of Jesus. Where did this paralytic man find himself? In the same place, in the foot of Jesus. They found themselves in the same place. And that's why today when I'm living my life on this earth, am I finding myself in the name of, uh, in the feet of Jesus? You know, it's the feet of Jesus today. Am I finding myself in a place where I'm able to give him honor? Am I finding myself in a place where I can give them praise? That's the question. Am I in a place where I am giving honor, glory to God, not because of my strength, but because of his grace? That's the question. That's the question. Praise God. Yeah, you know. What was the word one? Praise God. Okay. So did you understand? Can you nod your heads, please, if you understood? Nod your heads. Yes, I understood. Understood. I understood. I understood. 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 I am understood. I understood. Why is it that only few videos are on? Can you put your videos on, please? Praise God. Okay, good. Thank you, Jesus. So, did you understand? Are there any questions on this? Praise no. God. No. This is this is this is very important. Am I right? I don't know whether you felt like it, but for me, this is very important. Right? Yes. 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 Why very I'm saying interesting also. Praise God. Why I'm saying it's very important mm -hmm. is because. This is explaining. You see that Ephesians 2 8. Don't I mean I, I many times read it Ephesians 2 8 as a as a way of explaining the way to receive my blessing. You are by grace, you received it through your faith. But that's not the way we are supposed to see that. For by grace you are saved through faith. You know what that should become? That should become a lifestyle where we are just responding to his grace. It should become a lifestyle. Lifestyle. Hallelujah. So did you understand? Are there any questions? Anything you like to ask? You can ask now. Praise God. Okay, we'll write down. Yeah, you can write down. My faith. Yeah, write down now. Let's write down. My faith. My faith. In response to his grace. My faith in response to his grace should become, become, should become Can you repeat the word? Thing? Pardon? Can you repeat the word thing again? Okay, my faith in response to his grace, it's in the chat, should become not only the way to receive my manifestation, not only the way to receive my manifestation. But it should be my lifestyle. But it should be my lifestyle. You know, can I just mute you? I can't mute. Praise God. Okay, he's muted. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Okay, what did you write? You wrote, my faith in response to his grace should become not only the way to receive my manifestation, but it should be my lifestyle. My faith, my faith, my faith. Let's write the meaning of the word my faith. My faith means God's faith put in me. God's faith put in me. And that faith I am putting to action. And that faith I am putting to action. Praise God. So did you understand? Yes. Are there any questions on this? You yes, can ask. Understood. Okay, praise God. Okay, over to you, Nishanti. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Alistair. Lovely teaching. About uh, three, four years back, I was listening to one of the priests, Father Daniel. So he was talking, I mean, this was just before the Feast of the Pentecost. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit. And many of us think that, you know, if we lead a holy life, then Holy Spirit is given as a gift. So he was saying, you take an energy drink before you start the race, not after you finish the race. Because it is the drink that gives you the energy to, uh, you know, go through that race. So the same way the Holy Spirit is given to us so that we can lead a holy life, not as a gift for leading a holy life. So you yes. were touching upon that, uh, you know, in this teaching. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, in, anybody has any questions? No, it was clear. No. Okay. So then we'll no. Uh, no. wind up with the prayer. Thanks everyone for joining on a Friday evening. Praise God. Why is it so special? No, usually weekends you tend to go out. No, that's why I said. <laughs> yeah, actually there's there's curfew, weekend curfew in Bangalore. So it's good. Yeah, Aristan, we'll wind up with the prayer. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your goodness, your compassion, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this amazing word of yours, Lord, this wonderful truth of yours. Help us, Lord, to apply this word in our lives so that we are able to experience your purpose, your mission, your vision in our lives, Lord. Lord, let it be everything of you spoken to us today. And you help us, Lord, to apply this word in our life, apply this truth in our life, so that, Lord, we are not only hearers of your word, not only uh, listening to your word, not only the Logos word, Lord, but the Rema word, where we are able to apply that word. We are able to apply that truth. We are able to apply that gospel in our life, Lord, so that we are able to experience your purpose in our life, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us this amazing truth. And Lord, as we have heard your word, we are sure, Lord, to apply this word in our life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray about Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. everyone. See you all tomorrow. Same time, 8 o'clock. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye